It's Thursday, April 13, 2023. You know, I was just thinking today how shocking things are right now as we're more concerned about tailpipes and gas stoves, all while everything around us is crumbling. We're watching an economy crumble. We look at the national debt at $31.5 trillion and skyrocketing. We look at social security running out of, of funds uh, by 2033. We look at two thirds of this nation working paycheck to paycheck. Uh, we have a homeless crisis taking place. We have food insecurity taking place. We have infrastructure crumbling. Our school system is crumbling. And what is our priority? Our priority is tailpipes and gas stoves. Uh, also, we're on the brink of a housing collapse, a retail apocalypse, and uh, a world war. And we're more concerned about tailpipes and gas stoves. Also, uh, we are using up all of our strategic petroleum reserves. Uh, we are sending billions of dollars over to other countries, but we need to be concerned about tailpipes and gas stoves. It's unbelievable. If somebody would have told us this 20 years ago, we would have said that those people need to be institutionalized. But here we are today, in uh, 2023, and we're talking about stuff like this. Where are our priorities? Uh, the moral compass in this country is just decaying. Socially, we're decaying, and we're more worried about tailpipes and gas stoves. Interesting article today. Ruble's share in Russian export payments reaches dollar level, topping 30%. The share of the ruble in payments for export deliveries at the end of 2022 exceeded 30%, uh, equaling the share of the US dollar and significantly exceeding the share of the euro. You have Russia right now talking with Iran, Turkey, China, parts or, or countries, uh, uh, different countries in, in Africa and Latin America. Same with, with China. China's talking to all these countries. They're in Africa right now. They're in Latin America. Uh, they're talking to Mexico right now. And so while all this is going on, while there are big moves being, t uh, being played behind the scenes right now internationally across the globe, we're talking about tailpipes here in America. We are now looking at a direct threat to the U.S. dollar. And we're talking about tailpipes. Another article today, not a single student is proficient in reading or math at 55 Chicago schools. We're talking about tailpipes, ladies and gentlemen. Why aren't we talking about the real problems? Why aren't we talking about the unfunded pensions? Why aren't we talking about these, uh, these bankrupt cities and municipalities? Why aren't we talking about how bankrupt America is, but yet we're sending hundreds of billions of dollars over to other countries. We're talking about tailpipes and gas stoves. Here's another one today. Walmart closing locations across 12 states this year. Why are they doing it? Because the economy is crumbling and this crime wave is surging. We don't even talk about crime. We're letting people out early. We're rewarding criminals. And it's the average citizen who's paying the price here. Here's another one, Fox Business. 50,000 stores could close in five years due to a slowdown in consumer spending. You know, I was watching some videos today and it, 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 it amazes me that people will make videos, tell us how bad the economy is, tell us that this is it, everything's done, it's game over, and then they laugh about it. They laugh and smile and chuckle and I don't, I don't, I don't see what's so funny about this. I see people getting hurt now. Uh, daily. People that I know, people in my circle, people in the comments, uh, friends of friends, uh, people that I read about in the news, uh, videos I watch, there are people really getting hurt here. So I don't know how people can make videos, tell us how bad the economy is or how bad it's going to get and how bad uh, this is going to be and, and that everything is going to come to an end and yet laugh and chuckle about it like it's a joke. This is no joke. When you're talking about stores going out of business, this means people are losing jobs. This means the economy is worsening, meaning people don't have the discretionary money to go out and spend. This means people aren't putting food on the table for their kids. This means people are falling behind on rent, mortgages, car payments. They're losing jobs. This is serious stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I don't find anything funny about it. That's why I don't sit here, laugh, giggle, and smile when I'm talking to you for 15, 20 minutes, sharing the news with you and my opinions, because there's nothing funny about it. This is extremely concerning, 
and it's going to affect every one of us. It's not a joke. And what a lot of these people who make these videos don't realize is when it does come to the end, when it's, when it's oh, we're at the end, it's end game, or everything's going to collapse and this, it's game over, what they don't realize, it's not, it's not going to come to an end. It's not game over. It's just going to escalate because now people are going to come to your house. Now people are desperate and they don't care if they're your friend, a family member, a member of your church, uh, your neighbor. These people could become your worst enemy because they're hungry. Their kids are hungry. You're going to see chaos. You're going to see violence. You're going to see people absolutely lose their minds. Yet people make these videos and think it's all funny and it's a joke and, you know, it's no big deal. It's not funny. It's not a joke because a lot of people are going to get hurt here. And a lot of people are getting hurt right now. So, you know, don't take anything for granted right now, ladies and gentlemen. Be preparing. Uh, in this article, Tommy Bahama, CEO, Doug Wood, said this is a natural part of the retail cycle. So, Doug Wood says that this is natural at 50,000 stores are going to cl possibly close in the next fi uh, five years not taking into account how many thousands of stores have hundreds of thousands of small business owners and medium business owners have lost everything and shuttered their stores and businesses. This is not normal. This is not a natural part of a retail cycle. It's completely abnormal because when you pump in $7 trillion in a 30 month span, you begin to create massive inflation. When you shut down an economy for over a year, then you have a shipping crisis. We had shortages. This is not natural. Again, this is not going to be the end. The second part becomes very social, very chaotic, and I cannot stress the importance to make sure that you have security as your number one asset next to God. Don't laugh. Don't joke around. Don't giggle. Get your security house in order. Make sure you can protect your food, your water, your assets, your family, and yourself. None of this stuff is worth anything if somebody can just come to your house and take it. This article I want to share with all of you right now, I've not seen at all on the television today, but I've been reading uh, on many news sources online today and last night. And I first read this last night on The Hedge. And it is really horrifying and disturbing. Burned alive. Explosion kills 18,000 cattle in South Fork Dairy, in South Fork, at South Fork Dairy Farm in Texas. 18,000 cattle burned alive uh, in this explosion. What is going on here? Please comment down below. If you have not heard about this or seen it, Google it immediately, it'll come right up. But this is so disturbing. Think about 18,000 animals being burned alive in a building. A dairy farm in Texas was rocked by a massive explosion that resulted in the deaths of thousands of cattle. The fire resulted in the explosion that took place. They're not saying what caused the explosion, but uh, all, the cows were housed in this building. These were dairy cows. And so the building caught on fire, 18,000 plus uh, cows burned alive. This had to be absolutely horrifying. I mean, imagine hearing the sounds of these animals being burned alive. It's just so horrific. Uh, I mean, first off, I, I mean, I don't want to see any animal suffer. I think being burned alive is probably one of the worst ways to go. Uh, and, and, and just a waste of perfectly good animals, dairy cows. Uh, and and what, what does this now mean for dairy and the price of milk? But uh, how did this happen? Why are we seeing so many fires? And I, I mean, again, it's just so, uh, so, dis so disturbing to think about what this uh, must have looked like and sounded like when it was occurring. But uh, comment down below. CNBC tax refunds are getting smaller and fit into the picture of a slowing economy. The average tax refund is down about 10.4% from a year ago. And so I think in February, SNAP uh, uh, cut off the extra uh, benefits uh, for lower incomes. So now people are getting less, less taxed, uh, re less, less tax returns. Uh, SNAP, uh, SNAP checks have decreased now. And this is going to be a problem for people, uh, poor people, 
It's going to be a problem for people uh, who shop, right? They're not going to be able to buy as much food. And it's going to be a problem for stores like Walmart who accept SNAP. And now people are going to have, you know, roughly about $100 less a month uh, to shop with. That might not sound like a big deal to a lot of people out there, but to these people, it's a huge deal. Every cent counts. And cutting out, you know, $100 a month to these people, that's over $1,000 a year. It's, it's a big deal. And we take the average tax refund, I think it's about d down to about 2,900. Um, I think it was a little bit over 3,200 last year, but this is a big deal. So people are going to have less money to spend. Uh, and the dollars that they have are, are not stretching as far because we still have inflation. Even though they're telling us today inflation's come down, hasn't really come down. I was at the grocery store uh, three days ago. Doesn't seem like it came down when I was at the store. Services going up. They're telling us that uh, airline tickets, everything, fuel's going up. But yet everybody's going to jump on an airplane this summer and take a vacation. Uh, I'm watching uh, Fox Business today. And, uh, you know, they're, they're reporting that, that uh, you know, everybody's going to go on a vacation this, this summer and everybody's going to fly. I find that hard to believe. I really find that hard to believe with reading some of this data. Here's another one, the hedge. Illinois trucking company sudden shutdown leaves team drivers drivers stranded and unpaid. A company called Chromex Inc. This company went bankrupt. Trucks went back to the bank. Drivers um, were just left stranded. Stranded at, uh, at, at hotel rooms thousands or a thousand miles away from, from their homes without a paycheck and running out of money. So luckily, a nonprofit group, Truckers Emergency Assistance Responders, stepped in, got these uh, guys back home. But this is just another example of how fast things are happening. Uh, one minute you're working, the next minute your truck has been taken by the bank, uh, you, 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 your funds have been cut off, you don't get a paycheck, and you're stranded. This is what is going to continue to happen throughout America. Here's another one, Fox Business. Mortgage rates edge lower as inflation continues to slow. Uh, they have the 30-year fixed um, rate at 6.27. Bank rate has it at 6.73. Take your pick. The question is, would you buy a house right now? Uh, I got five more listings today. I got a couple more price reductions. Everything is still, in my opinion, way overpriced. And whether you're paying 6.27 or 6.73 on an overvalued home, uh, I think it's way too early to jump in the housing market. And these rates, uh, with these overvalued uh, home prices, good luck. Again, watching the television today, they're gonna they're gonna have the real estate agents out there telling you that wow, this is great, six point two seven. We've peaked at inflation. The economy's good. The banking situation is sound now. Everything's gonna be okay. You should jump in and buy a home. That is absolute garbage. I don't give financial advice, but if you were a family member of mine, I would tell you stay away. Do not buy a house today. That's, this is going to be something you absolutely regret. And I will finish with this last article on the hedge. Jim Rickards, the real reason gold has not exploded. Gold has done very, very well. Gold up way up again today. Up, uh, what were we up today? Over $20. Silver up. 55, 56, 60 cents, whatever it was. But the metals did very, very well today. While inflation is peaked, while the markets are up, while we have all this good news, yet gold and silver are up. But why haven't we seen it hit 3,000, 4,000, 5,000? And Jim Rickard says that's an easy answer. It's the dollar. They keep the dollar propped up, but they're not going to be able to keep it up. And the minute they lose control of the dollar and we're seeing that happening right now and it's not really going to be up to america it's it's really going to be up to the rest of the world as they turn dollars in as they begin to use their own currencies or go to other currencies uh, as we begin to see currencies possibly backed by gold uh, this is going to set in panic we're going to see panic uh, set in and you're going to see at that point a a rush to dump dollars and a rush to get uh, two currencies that are uh, have more faith, uh, who are backed by gold. Um, and let's face it, the world now is looking at China as strength and they see America as weakness. But we're going to see panic set in. And when that happens, countries will not be able to dump dollars fast enough. Those dollars are going to come here. You're going to have hyperinflation. And this is when you begin to see gold go to places people never thought humanly possible, except the people at central banks.
Those people, the central banks, they know exactly where it's going to go and they know exactly why they have been stockpiling such a massive amount of gold over the years. The average person here in America has no idea what's going on. They just watch baseball games and football games and you know they just flood their mind with Netflix and a bunch of garbage. The rest of the world is beginning to see what's going on. The central banks, they know what's going on. They have known what's going what's been going on. That's why they have been buying so much gold. China, Russia, India, Saudi Arabia, etc., Turkey, it just goes on and on and on. They know that panic is coming and they know what gold is going to do when the panic sets in. So make sure you own some gold, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't afford gold, own some silver. But I will tell you right now, even though it's a little over $2,000 an ounce, we will look back and go, wow, that was cheap. I remember buying gold at $1,300 and I thought that was, that was a lot, you know, $1,300. Wow, I can't believe $1,300 for this little coin. Well, now, now to buy it, I would have to pay over $2,100 for it with the premium. Silver, same thing, buying it at, you know, 11, 12, $13, you know, for, for a coin. Wow, I thought that was a lot. Well, now it's $26 an ounce plus you're paying a premium. If you want to buy Eagles, I don't know what Eagles are today. What are they, $40? Um, so we're going to look back and wish that we would have bought more of this stuff when it was on sale. And yes, it's on sale. $2,000 an ounce, 26 for silver. It's on sale. And we'll look back and regret that we didn't buy more of this stuff. So the panic is coming. Prepare the best that you can and get ready, ladies and gentlemen.